On my recent video on the Leica M10 Monochrome, I got lots of comments and some people asked and said, why did you not provide any crops so that we could judge about the sharpness of those black and white images coming from that newly developed Leica Monochrome sensor with 40 megapixels. I'm going to do this now in this video and uh, I will do a special experiment. I will compare the Leica M10 Monochrome with its 40 megapixel sensor with the mighty and powerful Phase 1 IQ4 digital back with 150 megapixels and a color sensor. And I'm going to discuss also sharpness in general. I will compare the images and in this way provide answers to the questions in the comments from people who were actually scratching their head and said, now we have such a high resolution monochrome sensor, why is math photographer not showing us the sharpness of those images? Let's kick off the video. Before we come to the experiment, let's quickly discuss what sharpness really means. Let's start with acutance. On the left hand side you see high acutance, which means the transition between black and white, the two extreme colors, is a step function which is binary. It immediately jumps from black to white. On the right hand side, where we have low acutance, we have a step function with a slope and kind of a transition area between the two extreme colors, black and white, which is perceived as kind of a fuzziness. And of course, that's a subjective impression. So in other words, acutance is describing the contours and the more contour or contrast you have in an image, the more the human eye perceives it as sharp. But the level of sharpness you perceive by acutance is totally subjective. Summarizing, acutance is about contours, edges and contrast. The second element is resolution. And on the left hand side you see an image with high resolution and on the right hand side you see the same image in low resolution. And low resolution has to do with pixels in X and Y direction. And of course, as we all know, is measured in megapixels. And the more megapixels you have, the more the human eye perceives an image as sharp. And there's also on the right hand side this artifact or pixel block building which makes the image perceived by the human eye as not really sharp. Resolution is not subjective, resolution is objective, in contrast to acutance, where we said it's subjective. And why is it objective? Because it can be hard-coded, measured in megapixels. Concluding on sharpness, let's start with a quotation from DX Omark. They say, sharpness is a subjective quality attribute of an image or lens. Sharpness indicates the visually perceived quality of detail resolution and contrast in an image or reproduced by a lens. So sharpness can be defined as a function of acutance and resolution. And the function wrapping together acutance and resolution is the human perception function, which is different from individual to individual and is in the eye of the observer. Acutance is subjective and can make a big difference depending on who is looking at an image and resolution is objective because it can be measured in megapixels and there's nothing to argue about. And by the way, if you have blurry parts of an image, then this might be perceived as especially beautiful. That's why in photography, we talk so much about bokeh. And since we now have common ground and agreed what we mean when we speak about sharpness, we can start with the experiment. So let's look at the scene I'm using for my little experiment. And I remember when I was a teenager and got my first very cheap, absolutely non-professional digital camera, I always tried to find out how sharp the camera is by taking photos of bookshelves and then trying to read what's written on those books. Of course, today I think completely different about sharpness and you just saw my little excursion, how I view sharpness and what it means for me. But the experiment itself is not a bad experiment and I've chosen a special book which you see on display here, which I want to use for my experiment. It's the Museum Leica book and it has the whole history of Leica cameras from the very beginning in 1919 up to today. The book has many pictures, illustrations and also photos from original old documents and we will use them to judge about sharpness in the way I explained at the beginning of the video when we compare the Leica M10 monochrome with the Phase 1 IQ4. So the book will be placed on a chair some distance away from me. The cameras will be mounted on a tripod. I will use a Profoto B10 
LED light to actually get a lot of light on that book. And then we take the pictures and compare the results. And I will switch cams. So when I take photos with the M10M, I will do my best to get the best quality and sharpness out of that camera. And then I switch cams and try to get the best out of the phase one IQ4. Let's start a test with the phase one. So I have my IQ4 here mounted on a phase one XF body. And the lens I'm using is a Schneider Kreuznach lens, blue ring, 80 millimeters, which corresponds roughly if you count it down to a full frame equivalent to 55, 56 millimeters, give or take, which comes close to the Nocti looks I'm using on the Leica M10M. The settings I've chosen here, I'm in completely manual exposure mode. The mirror is up. I'm on electronic shutter, which gives the phase one an advantage in comparison to the Leica M10M. I'm in spot metering. I'm at an aperture of f11. I'm on the self timer. And that's basically all you need to know. Maybe the exposure time is one fourth of a second. And uh, I'm going to switch on now the Profoto B10 and then we are good for the first shot. So the Profoto B10 is on. We have a little background noise from the fan cooling down the LEDs, but we have full brightness and we are ready to take the shot now. With electronic shutter, so there should be no noise, no shakes, no vibration, optimal conditions for the phase one. And uh, thereafter we check the image. If it is good, we keep it. If it is not good, we repeat the same procedure. And you heard it just a little beep, indicating that the image has been taken. So let's check this. Let's go into 100%. I think this looks quite good. Let's do a pinch to zoom. This looks very good. I think we can even read the writing on the paper. So uh, that is actually a good result. I've now mounted the Leica M10 monochrome on the tripod here. And uh, the lens, as discussed before, is the Noctilux 50 millimeters, which is close to the 55, 56 millimeter full frame equivalent of the Schneider Kreuznach 80 millimeters. And uh, I have used, let's quickly go through the menu maybe to see where we are. So first of all, I have a self time of two seconds. The ISO I set to an ISO of 200, which is matching the phase one. IQ4 settings. I want to have a digital negative because we want to compare raw images. And then on the main menu here, the only important thing is maybe exposure metering, which is at spot. And that's also matching the settings we had on the phase one IQ4. So that's good. I think in terms of exposure time, it also looks good, but let's zoom in to let the focus peaking kick in. So let's get as close as we can to that page. And I think this is not too bad for the time being. Let's see if we need to take the exposure slightly different to get this more contrasty. So maybe this is the right one. I cannot read the writing on that page here like I could in the phase one. That's probably the difference between 40 megapixels and uh, 150 megapixels, but we try to do our best. All right, I think that's good. Let's take a first shot. The overall scene is darker than on the phase one IQ4, but I needed to actually adjust the exposure time to get this page visible at all, which we have here. Let's see if we can zoom in here of the result, but I can see something here. So that doesn't look too bad. And that's basically what we want to focus on. So I don't care about the overall scene. I want to focus just on that page here to get the tiny little details out of that picture. Let's take another image, maybe with a little more brightness here. And then we can compare later in post. All right, I think that's it. I stop here, turn my attention to these raw files on the computer and let's see how the results look alike. I'm really curious to see this and I'll be back in a second. So in the meanwhile, I looked at the photos and I selected two, which I think are my champions here. This one here is from the Leica M10 monochrome. And this one here is from the um, phase one IQ4 and the Schneider Kreuznach lens. And if you look at the data here, you see the lens here and by the way, the 80 millimeters, um, they are probably, if you think about a crop factor of one divided by 1.58, which is the square root of 2.5, probably closer to 51, 52 millimeters. So 
From a focal length, the Noctilux and the Schneider Kreuznach lens are really comparable and I think is a fair comparison. So we have 150 megapixels here and uh, you see my best shot I generated with an ISO of 200, one fourth of a second of a shutter speed and an aperture of f11, besides all the experimenting which happened on the sideline. So 150 megapixel is a lot of resolution and I used the phase one for many occasions. I have a handful of videos on the phase one technology on my channel and people are invited to check them out. I'm here now on the loop tool and I have chosen the loop size to be large and the loop zoom to be at 200%. So we can sneak a little bit around. What I'm interested in is this part of that page in that Leica museum book. And if I go onto that and get it big on screen, this is really amazing. So you can almost read what's written on there. You clearly see that it is in the handwriting and you get a lot of details here. You see also here um, basically the writings below the pictures in that book and you can see them. That's all in German, by the way. So this says Versuchsmuster an Leica Kamera mit Planetengetriebe. Just for those of you who like German. So really nice. I see a lot of details here. I'm happy with that picture. It's pinpoint sharp. So let's now switch from the phase one IQ4 image to the image taken by the Leica M10 monochrome. And you see here the lens now is a Leica Noctilux M lens, widest open apertures 0.95, 50 millimeter focal length, a little bit less than what we had on the Schneider Kreuznach lens on the phase one body, but that's okay. Uh, ISO 200, which is at par, shutter speed one sixth of a second compared to one fourth of a second on the phase one. Also comparable, the aperture a bit more wide open than what I used on the medium format sensor. And that's more a rule of thumb, but the medium format sensor just swallows more light. So I opened the aperture a bit more here on the full frame sensor. So if I use now the zoom tool or the loop tool to zoom into that page or that part of the page, which I'm interested in, then I can clearly recognize that there is something in handwriting on that page. And uh, I think it's a stunning amount of detail we get here, but just from a physical perspective, if you think about resolution as pixels in X and Y direction on a sensor filling that rectangle, then 40 megapixels is just much less, of course, than 150 megapixels. But, and there is a big but here, let's place them side by side. So here we have them side by side and typically, and that's something which is very subjective, of course, I don't judge about an image in terms of their pixel resolution. I judge about it in terms of what is the impression of sharpness, if we want to talk about sharpness at all. So this is not about pixel peeping. Also, of course, in this test, I'm doing a lot of pixel peeping. So let's see what we can get here and what the visual impression is if we would do large prints from both pictures here. So let's start with the Leica and uh, let's go up here on the zoom so that the book fills the page. And now let's do the same with the phase one image. So we zoom this as long and as much as we need to actually get the same size here. So I think that's about comparable. That's about the same crop into the image. And if you look at that, and if you look at the image here and focus on that part which we were interested in, there is hardly any difference noticeable. And this is already on the phase one at 56% zoom in and on the Leica M10 monochrome, it's a 100% crop. So that is something which I think if you look onto a picture and judge about how sharp is that image, again, if you want to talk about sharpness and pixel peeping at all, then these images are very much comparable and you wouldn't expect that this is a 40 megapixel camera and this is a 150 megapixel camera. Let's see if we can go a little further. So we stay on the Leica side again and we zoom in a bit more here, maybe up to 300%. And we do the same on the phase one side. So we go up as much as we need to actually get this into the same size here almost a little reduction is necessary. So now we have them side by side. And clearly now if you peep in from a Leica M10 full frame sensor with 40 megapixels to 300%, I'm just blown away by the fact that this is still looking very good. There is no pixel block building here. It's still very smooth. 
And I think it confirms my hypothesis that 40 megapixel on a monochrome sensor is actually more than 40 megapixel on a color sensor. Of course, on the phase one here with 150 megapixels, you have much more reserves. You can even go into 400%. And then you get still much more details here, of course. Also, it starts to get artifacts here if you zoom in that much. Playing a little more with those two images, here is an interesting crop into the image. So on the Leica M10 monochrome, I'm at 400% now. This is the maximum I can do to an image on Capture One as far as I know. And on the Phase One, I'm at 216%. And clearly you have more pixels in the Phase One image. That's why this appears sharper. But you nevertheless, given that this is a 400 times zoom here or crop into the image, you still get a lot of detail and an interesting detail is here on the side. So here is the German word for elevator, which means Aufzug in German. And we have the same here, Aufzug, elevator. And clearly this is better on the face one side. And as I said, given that you have a pixel dimension, which is much larger here, it's not astonishing that this is what we find. But if you look at the left hand side on the Leica side, and imagine that this is a 400% crop into an image. This is just insane what level of detail you get here. And uh, I think in general, if we compare those pictures, pretty nice. If on the Leica side, you go down again to 200%. I think with a 200% magnification, this black and white picture can very well be printed and you won't see any artifacts or pixel blocks or anything that would distract you from the aesthetics of a picture. And you see also that the writing below the images then becomes much clearer again. And I think this is an astonishing result. And again, shows that 40 megapixels in black and white is much more than 40 megapixels on a color sensor. So I want to end the video with a little wrap up. First of all, I intentionally decided to benchmark the Leica M10 monochrome against my best camera when it comes to resolution. Second, the conclusion is from looking at those images, this is not mainly about pixel dimensions in X and Y direction. This is also about a visual impression and how much can you crop in without getting artifacts or pixel blocks, which ruin a large print. And uh, if we look at what we saw here on the Leica M10 monochrome, I can easily zoom in more than 100%. So I can actually go up to 200% and still get a very clean picture, still get a lot of sharpness and details. I could even go one step further and go into 300%. And even then it looks quite nice. And this is basically confirming my hypothesis that if you take away the color filter array, then 40 megapixels appear in the visual impression much sharper than on a comparable color sensor. Of course, in terms of pixel dimensions, the Phase One IQ4 is not beatable. It has 150 megapixels on a color sensor and you can go very, very deep and still get a lot of details without any disturbing artifacts or pixel block building or what have you. And you see this here, if we compare this, this is looking really, really good, a really clean picture. And of course, if you want to go for the giant in resolution, then the phase one IQ4 is the camera to go to. And of course it gives you the color dimension in addition. If you love black and white, then you should be aware and will benefit from a 40 megapixel resolution sensor purely in black and white which allows for a crop in if you want to print a large image up to 300%, which means the 40 megapixels actually become in the visual impression, not in physical dimensions, but in the way the image is appearing to you, almost 120 megapixels. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, do not forget to subscribe to stay tuned on my content. Thanks for watching and peace out.